Hi, this is Heidi Gaiman from ilovemyshepherd.com. Welcome to Mental Health Mondays. I'm excited to start this new series that will give you five minutes of insight for mental health which also includes our relational health, our emotional health, of course, our physical health, our intellectual health, and even our vocational health. All of these things in life overlap. Um, but I want to give us the opportunity to both meet live on Facebook once a week for this really short period of time to answer mental health questions, to dig in a little deeper into what this thing is called mental health that we all have, um, that's programmed into all of our DNA by a wonderful creating God, um, but then also be able to consider some specific questions, some specific series that we're gonna do. So the month of January, we're gonna focus on help, which if any of you pay attention to ilovemyshepherd.com is my word for the year and is what we're going to focus on, especially during the month of January, but we'll return to over and over again. Um, and it'll be just kind of a theme. I think help is a word so often that we're afraid of. Um, and I want to talk about that. Just like at everything else at ilovemyshepherd.com, we like to talk about the hard stuff, bring up the hard conversations, but do it in a place of safety and relationship and a place where we can fall into the grace of our loving God and Savior. So with no further ado, today's topic is why ask for help? Anybody have any ideas if anybody wants to shout them out in the comments or um, if anyone's watching the YouTube archive too, they can put them in the comments over there. Uh, but why do you think it's hard to ask for help? What do you think, what are the barriers to asking for help? Uh, what is unattractive about asking for help, I guess? Um, what society pressures are on us? Um, that cause us to kind of push against getting help or receiving help. Um, you know, I just want to hear your input because I think it might be a little bit different for all of us, just like everything else. There's an individual bent to it, but then also there is some commonalities I think we can come together on. And so I have three components today of why ask for help. Number one is desperation. And I include this as number one because I think this is the most common reason we actually ask for help. This is what we wait for to get help, is we're at a place of desperation. And we are at the end of our rope. We don't know what to do. We're like, I I I'm out of ideas. <laughs> I'm out of options. Um, and so, you know, that's a horribly uncomfortable place to be. So number one, I would encourage you that one thing we're going to learn this month in particular, but this year at I Love My Shepherd, is asking for help before we need it. Um, and we'll get into that because it sounds really crazy as an idea to ask for help before we even know consciously that we need help. But we'll talk about how to do that. Um, but also like that place of desperation that's so uncomfortable. I want to encourage you to know that it's one of the places that I see Jesus do the most work, right? The most work. He is so um, engaged, I guess, in our lives, like way more engaged than we can even consciously understand. The Holy Spirit is inside of us, living in us. Um, God himself is, you know, all around us. Um, of course, he knows what's going on. He knows our deepest, darkest selves. He knows exactly what we need. But when we come to that uh, realization, that moment where we understand that we are in need, that is the place where Christ meets our hearts. It's where Christ meets our mind. Um, and it's where Christ connects us with other people. And so that need is really huge in the life of faith, but also in the life of our mental, emotional, relational health. Need is a real thing. Not a single one of us was created without need. But we try all the time to act like we were created a different way um, because we think that's stronger somehow, I think, or because we think that, um, you know, uh, the vulnerability isn't worth it. You know, somebody will do something with it. There's a, a sense of distrust, I guess, in our inability to see our need. And then sometimes even, um, you know, it, in our denomination, in our church, we, we have a lot of confession and we say how needy we are <laughs> um, between us and Jesus, but we forget to let other people into that. Um, and God created the church. He created um, 
relationships between people. Um, and I believe that he's working in them, even in people outside the church. You better believe that God is involved in their lives, even if they are not seeing it or not. Um, and that's one place we can begin to show people outside the church who and what the church is that um, Christ has put people and community together. So we'll get more into that. Um, I read in an article, and you can see the reference for the article on the I Love My Shepherd Facebook page, um, and I'll link it uh, on the blog and stuff. But the article said, um, we have moved from rugged individualism in the United States in particular to ragged individualism. And I thought that was really insightful. This place of desperation has left us ragged. Um, but as I say in Altogether Beautiful, desperation, that's exactly where Jesus does beautiful things in desperate people, in you and I and all people. Desperation is his business. So that's one why we should ask for help because we get desperate and we're all really actually a little bit desperate every day uh, because we're incomplete and we're waiting for God to complete his whole plan and picture. Okay, number two, growth. We ask for help for growth and this is a huge piece of um, moving from just asking for help in desperation to win it, you know, before, before we need help or even just in the moment that we know we need help that's not desperate, you know? When you look at your marriage and you're like, gosh, I really think um, there could be a little something more here. Um, or when you look at your vocation and you have that kind of discontent and you're letting God kind of speak in that discontent, reading his word and seeing what he wants. Um, same thing with mental health. When you feel the beginning of anxiety and, and you kind of notice maybe some patterns, maybe you notice that it's uh, creeping up, it's uncomfortable and you let it sit, you're like, oh, feeling anxious feeling a little sad more often, things like that. Th those those uh, emotions, uh, anxiety, anxiousness, sadness, are all good things. They're okay to experience. But when we have them kind of regularly, that's a cue from our body telling us, maybe there's a growth opportunity here. Maybe there's a growth opportunity. So that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna ask for help so we're growing. And that's before that place of desperation. That's just like one step before it. We're like, oh, I want to pay attention to my body. I want to pay attention. We'll talk about much more about emotions in February. So look forward to that too. Um, and if you guys have topics that you want to discuss, like shout them out, throw them up, and we'll put them on the schedule for Mental Health Mondays. Last, the third thing for um, why of mental health, uh, why ask for help is connection. And this is really the before before. <laughs> this is the place where we really, really uh, begin to seek help, to have help, if you will, um, in relationship before we even know we need it. Um, and this is where I think we want to find ourselves. We want to find ourselves in deeper places of connection where we're not at desperate when we ask for help. Although that's certainly a place to ask for help. Please don't not ask for help. But we're, we're, we're not even looking for growth. But we have relationships in our lives that are edifying and bring growth, bring help before we even know it before we even know it. You know, I have a friend, we just visited some friends in Houston, and spending a week with them made me really aware, uh, again, just like every time I get to see them, how thankful I am to have those people in my life who I know will say to me something before I see it. Because in some ways, they know some parts of me better than I can because I'm so close to the forest, right? I'm so close and I can't see what I need in my own life sometimes. So we all need relationships and connection. Then the act of asking for help, seeking help together is much less intimidating. And also the act of asking for help, seeking help together is connecting in itself. He is a connecting God. And it's really cool to see what he does in our mental, emotional, and relational help through our relationships, through people around us, through their knowledge and wisdom, through even articles that we read online that connect us with other people and their expertise and their struggles. When we share our struggles, we also connect people to the idea that asking for help is okay, that going through something is okay. So three reasons 
why we ask for help, desperation, growth, and connection together. Keep throwing your comments up. Keep throwing ideas up. You can catch this archive on YouTube and share it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put the first Mental Health Monday up on ilovemyshepherd.com too so people can find our series easier. I'll see you every Monday at noon right here. I Love My Shepherd Facebook. See you next time.